Hello everyone, this is week three, um, video one of two. The first video is going to be on the analog device. So let's have a look at it here. What have we got? We've got a monophonic synth, okay, uh, which is put together on a modular basis. So we've got various different modules, okay. And this is put together on uh, what, what they call a shell design. So we've got this shell around the middle around the middle part of analog and when we click on the different modules the middle display the middle interface changes to give us some extra controls all right so we've got two oscillators oscillator one and two we've got two filters we've got two amplifiers we've got a noise source here if we switch it on we can select it and we've also got two out two LFOs and then some controls which will control the analog device as a whole all right so we can set vibrato we can put the two uh oscillators in unison and we can also set some glide as well so i've got uh an uh, ascending descending c major scale <laughs> Okay, so let's just have a look at the different things. I'll turn the noise source off for the minute. Okay, um, let's just have oscillator one and filter one for now. Okay, so we've got a volume control, so we can change the volume of oscillator one. We can change the wave shape. So sine, a ramp wave, a square wave, and random also known as noise okay i'll put it back the sign we can change the octave okay i'm zoomed right in at the minute so my mouse isn't functioning particularly well but we can do semi-tune okay in semitones sorry not semi-tune we can tune in semitones and we can also detune all right so oscillator one the same as oscillator two we've got a filter okay so we can change the type of filter all right at the minute we're on low pass I'm just gonna go up through the octaves a little bit tell you what let's go to a ramp wave that's a bit better okay so we can change filter cutoff and resonance and this that we'll look at in a little bit longer okay and amp one we've got pan and level let's look at the uh, slightly more detailed settings within the middle of analog now well we can apply a pitch envelope so this is going to um the pitch is going to sort of dive down into the normal pitch and based on this percentage <laughs> down here the pitch is diving, so well, not diving up but it's moving up towards the normal pitch and we can also change the time so that's a quick change in pitch and that's a long change in pitch so you can put a pitch envelope on the oscillator okay on the filter we can set an ADSR envelope okay this defaults to the amount of envelope change on the filter at being at four so if you don't want a filter envelope on then uh, be sure to go and change this to zero all right but that's a normal ADSR envelope applied to the filter Okay, and the same on the amp as well, right? So we've got an ADSR envelope applied to the amp, okay? So attack here, decay, the sustain level, and the release time. An interesting feature of the ADSR envelope on the amp is this loop feature. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to stop this... I'm going to stop all the clips and I'll just use I'll use this I'm using my quad pad control here to to trigger the analog so I'll zoom back in okay I'll tell you what I'll get rid of that now then we've got our 
amp envelope set up here. Okay, if we set quite a long release time and a long attack time, these loop features here we have. I'll zoom back out so I can, I can read what the options are. Okay, we have off, which is no loop. We have AD-R, which is attack and decay phases repeat until the key releases. ADR-R, which is attack, decay and release phases repeat until the key release. And then the last one, ADS-AR, which is no loop, but the attack and release phases repeat once the key is released. So it's probably best just to, to demonstrate these. And you can read up on them in your own time. So let's have a listen to the first one. So there the attack and decay portions of the sound are being repeated until the key is released. In this second option, so I'm still holding the key down here. Okay, so because we've got long attack, decay, and release times, uh, culminating in over about nine, ten seconds between them. Okay, I've still I'm still holding the key down, so those phases of the envelope are being repeated while I hold the key down. All right, so I've had the key pressed down this whole time, and those all those phases of the envelope are repeating until I release the key, like so. The last one. Well, let's have a read of it here. No loop, but the attack and release phases repeat once the key is released. So I'm just going to change this up. So it's just attack and, and release that's going to be repeated once I take the key off. So there we go. We've got about one and a half seconds both for the uh, attack and release. So this is with the key pressed down. And when I take the key off, the attack and release phases are repeated. So quite a lot of creative uh, control with those loop options, okay, on the, the amp envelope. So do experiment with those. You can come up with all sorts of interesting sounds. Um, I'm not aware of a feature like that on any other synth in any other door, although I'm sure it is out there. I'm not aware of it. So within Ableton Live using analog, um, a good chance for some uh, creative expression. So let's have a look at the LFOs for now, okay. I'll just oh that's just dancing about a little bit. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will zoom out and then go back in. Okay, so let's get this clip going again. So that's sounding pretty funky based on the loop setting that we had left on. Alright, let's make this sound a little bit more interesting. This is detuning the two oscillators relative to each other. A little bit of noise as well. Alright, let's get the LFOs involved. So, um, the functions you would expect to see on an LFO, okay, we can choose wave shape, alright, sine, triangle, rectangle, or two different noise sources. We can change the rate, okay, so it can be a specific value in hertz, or we can sync it with the tempo of the session, alright. So, Let's apply this LFO to the filter frequency cutoff. Now you do that within this window um, that you reach via selecting filter one. So frequency mod, and let's just turn this up on LFO one. Okay, so there we go. We can see that and hear that the LFO one is affecting the filter cutoff. We can change wave shape, we can change the width of the waves, okay, which might be particularly interesting if we use rectangle wave. We can decide that the LFO is re-triggered on every key press. We 
can also offset by a number of degrees and have a delay so the influence of the LFO is delayed by a certain amount of milliseconds after every key press and we, go, we can also fade in the effect with this attack okay so you've got two different LFOs both with the same settings and you assign the influence of the LFOs on each individual shell okay so if we select the oscillator shell then we can change the pitch okay pitch modulation go over to filter one for frequency cutoff modulation and then amp one for pan modulation and level modulation so lastly if we just look at audio routing okay so we can root audio only from filter one to amp one and only from filter two to amp two okay so but we can route each oscillator to either filter one or filter two like so I'll tell you what let we let's just start this off playing again okay so on filter one we've got a low pass 24 dB per octave filter and I'm going to reduce the filter cutoff. I'm going to set the same filter on filter 2, but I'm going to leave the cutoff up there. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's put it around 3 6 and put the resonance up. So, this is currently going through filter 2. So, that's oscillator 1 through filter 2. If I change it to filter 1, the sound changes because we've got different settings on the on filter one than we have on filter two. So we can have all the way to filter one or all the way to filter two or somewhere in between. Okay, so that's 50-50 sending sending between filter one and filter two. Exactly the same on oscillator two. So you can go between filter one and filter two or somewhere in between. So that's called a pre-mix. So we, we decide what we want our various mixes to be. The relative levels of oscillator one, oscillator two, and the noise source, which can also go between filter one and filter two, okay? So we feed different amounts of signal from each of our three noise sources into one, sorry, into filter one and filter two. Now remember, filter one, audio directly to amp one, filter two, audio directly to amp two. We can also send a percentage of audio out from filter one into filter two with this percentage slider, all right? So if I only send uh, audio from oscillator one to filter one, okay, so we get this sound. Okay, so sorry, this is oscillator one going into filter two, and then before I had this slid up, so this was the audio from filter one was going into filter two, but if we reduce that, then that's only the audio we're hearing um, via oscillator one, filter one, and amp one. But if we turn this up, the audio runs from filter one through filter two and then into amp two. If we switch amp two off, okay, so that's exactly the same as this setup. Okay, because remember, audio goes direct from filter 1 into amp 1 and direct from filter 2 into amp 2. Alright, so that's pretty much it for now, and the next video we'll be looking at instrument racks.